Now here's the story all about how our lives are getting turned upside down. It's another week of not so fresh bills and the working people bravely fighting back. It's another episode of the Florida AFL-CIO Legislative Update. Man, I'm starving. When do we eat here? We eat here later. You eat here never. <laughs> it's like you eat here often. Everywhere you look, there's another attempt by the Florida legislature to limit our democratic rights. Longtime viewers of our show are familiar with the multiple attacks on cities and communities' rights to govern. House Bill 569 continues to threaten local governments by encouraging businesses to sue over any ordinance they don't like. Just wanted to say, you know, there's two truisms in this process that we can all be sure of. Number one, the Florida House doesn't like socialism. Number two, the Florida House doesn't like lawyers and lawsuits. You are inadvertently creating both with this bill. When we talk about socialism, what this legislation is doing, it is socializing business losses. Things change. The world changes. As ordinances change to fit the changing world, some businesses are going to be set to keep up, to change, to be nimble. Some will fall behind. This bill says if a business can't be nimble, if it can't adapt, and they have losses, now the taxpayers have to pay for it. That's called the socialization of business losses. Are very profitable to some people. Some favor one business over the other. What this says is anytime we want to fix a bad ordinance that someone is profiting by, the community is going to have to pay that person for permission to change that ordinance. If it's going to cost them any money, all this the, the whole community has to kick in to cover their losses to fix a mistake that shouldn't be there. I candidly love the bill because it at least from listening to the debate, what it sounds like, as the owner of a small tutoring center, we can pass a local ordinance to improve local schools, which is going to decrease the number of kids getting tutored, and then I can sue and do well for my business. So I really, I'm seeing a lot of upside with this one, so I just want to thank you for bringing I see a trend in our legislature where we are elevating the individual above the community rather than trying to make sure that we maintain those two in balance. And so I think that this bill goes just too far. When you think about $900 million and what we could do with those resources. HB 569 passed the Judiciary Committee 13 to seven. That's why bringing in new business is my number one priority. How? Through tax incentives. See, we're gonna make it cheaper for out-of-state businesses to set up shop right here in Lanford. So they get a tax break? Yeah, that's why they come here. Well, who's going to pay the taxes that they ain't paying? Well, you, you will, but <laughs> you'll be working. Good, steady employment. Union wages? Well, now, part of the reason these companies are finding it so expensive to operate in other locations... So is that... they're going to dump the union so they can come here and hire us at scab wages, and then for that privilege, we get to pay their taxes. Is your husband home? <laughs> the outlook for the American worker just got a little rosier this week as House Bill 619 continued to pass through its committees. This bill would require the use of American steel and iron on public works projects across the state benefiting our economy and American workers. So I would just like to really encourage the Florida AFL-CIO, the steel workers we represent, and everyone that we, we represent that uses these products, uh, we ask that you support this legislation because it is going to do so much, not only for our members and other workers in construction and other related trades, but really across the economic sector. Whenever there are bills that are bipartisan in nature and bills that we can agree on, um, kind of tickles my fancy, if you will. But um, specifically when we're talking about bills that put America first, uh, especially when it comes to trade. This is focused on what we're doing with our state dollars. This is not about the rest of the marketplace. This is literally about our government's procurement policy. And so when it comes to using taxpayer dollars in this, in this realm, I think it's the right way to go because it does prioritize Americans from our procurement policy standpoint, and it doesn't violate any of the free market principles that a lot of us, that a lot of us share. HB 619 passed the House State Affairs Committee 20 to three. You don't think I can be cool? 
Just wait till you see how I get down and get funky with my bad self. hoo -yah! House Bill 1557 is an attack on our teachers and a truly draconian effort to silence parents and students in the LGBTQ community. But I feel like there's a theme here. Because we're passing legislation to censor our workplaces, our schools, our teachers. But I can tell you right now, you're not gonna censor me as a state rep. That's right. What is age appropriate? What is classroom instruction? And in fact, I haven't heard the bill sponsor or anybody else give me examples as to what classroom instruction is and to as to why classroom instruction has, why this bill has been brought up. Representative Harding, I'm speaking. I have not heard the bill sponsor tell me what example has happened in recent history that we have to have this bill. Fierce debate. HB 1557 was passed 69 to 47 and will now be heard in the Senate. What do you boys think I should do? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Reward us for our honesty? <laughs> hey, hey, it worked for the beef. <laughs> As we approach the final weeks of the 2022 legislative session, members of the Working Families Lobby Corps tirelessly continue to fight for Florida's working people. Hey, I'm James Engel. I'm the president of IBEW Local 1205. I, uh, I like to come up to Lobby Corps so that I can let my members know what's going on up here in Tallahassee, and so I can let these guys up in Tallahassee know that my membership's watching. Thanks. My name is April Isaacs, and I represent Osceola County and the Osceola County uh, educators. And I came here looking for the truth, and I found so much more. I found brothers and sisters. I found legislatures who decided to listen. And mostly, I found solidarity in our message. I wish you could have been here, but I promise to come back and share. Thank you. Solidarity! We'll be back next week for even more appointment television. See you next week.